What does the monkeys, Queen Elizabeth, and Greek mythology have to do with this magnificent automobile? Well, stay tuned as we explore the rise and fall of Phaeton and take a look at some of the beautiful examples of this automobile in the Martin Auto Museum. Before we go inside and take a look at some of these magnificent automobiles, I thought I would give you a little background on Phaeton. Also pronounced Phaeton by some, myself included, but the correct pronunciation is Phaeton, I believe. In Greek mythology, Phaeton was the son of Helios. Helios was the god of the sun who would drive his fiery chariot across the heavens in the morning to bring light to the earth. His ornate chariot was pulled by the strongest, most powerful horses that were known to never tire. Phaeton apparently had a bit of a dysfunctional relationship with his dad, Helios. After all, Helios was busy doing God stuff all the time. But uh, maybe out of a guilty conscience, Helios said that he would grant Phaeton one wish. Phaeton's one wish was to pilot the fiery sun chariot across the heavens. This is one promise Helios did not want to grant. After all, piloting the fiery chariot with its powerful horses came great responsibility, and the horses were very difficult to control. But true to his word, Helios granted Phaeton's wish. Granting this wish proved to have disastrous consequences, but more on that a little later. In the 17 and 1800s, the name Phaeton was given to describe a very specific type of chariot. These were four-wheeled chariots, very ornate and lightweight, mostly for the wealthy, and pulled by two powerful horses. During the transition from the horse pulled carriages to the horseless carriage, the name was then given to describe a very specific type of automobile. This was a four-door convertible, open air, meaning no side windows, and sometimes a separate cowling or windshield for the rear passengers. These cars were powered by some of the highest horsepower engines available. But like the chariots of the 17 and 1800s, these Phaetons of the 1920s and 30s were owned by the gods of that time, namely the powerful, rich, and famous. Let's go inside the Martin Auto Museum and take a look at some of these magnificent automobiles. I don't know why this car caught my eye, but it sure is a good looking car. 34 Chevrolet Series DC Standard Four Door Phaeton. So I was just told by one of the other enthusiasts here that the Phaeton means four door, but it has no windows. So it's purely, uh, surely a fair weather car. But this sure is a beautiful car. touring car, big, big back seat for a Sunday afternoon drive back in the day. That's a beautiful hot rod. 32 Ford four-door painting. That's a great emblem. Not too overdone. This is an interesting car. Hogan's Heroes car. I grew up watching Hogan's Heroes. Four door Phaeton Mercedes.
Here's another Phaeton Cadillac dual cowl. We've got to check this thing out. Look at those headlights. 1929. Boy. Phaeton again, convertible with no windows. It'd be neat if they built a car like that today. But here's the dual cowling. You would get in, and then this part would fold down, and the windshield would fold up, fold up if you had the soft top down. <coughs> now that's a Cadillac. It's like they even have some storage compartments underneath there. Dual cowl. Cadillac. <clears throat> this is uh, kind of interesting. They've got these signs only on a couple of cars, but a lot of the other cars, they're letting the kids get inside, everybody get inside, have their picture taken. So, uh, oh, very nice museum, all that they've done here. <laughs> 1930 La Salle, that was the song that Archie Bunker sang at the beginning. Didn't our La Salle run great? Those were the days. I always wondered what a La Salle was, but this is it. Another Phaeton with Convertible top and no side windows. Oh, little extra jump sheet seats if you have extra people. Secondary windshield. Looks like these windshields also fold around, fold around to block the wind on the side. Matching trunk. Couple of beautiful, beautiful cars here. Another TV show I grew up watching with the Hogan's Heroes was a TV show called The Monkees. Now this car was commissioned and built by a customizer named Dean Jeffries. When I worked in Hollywood, I would always drive by his shop and see some of the movie cars out in the parking lot just sitting there waiting to be put in a museum. I always thought what a dream job that would be to be able to build customized cars for the movies or TV shows like this. I also wondered where you would get inspiration to build a car, a hot rod, that could sit a four-piece band. Well, he must have gotten his inspiration from the Phaeton. Chrysler Corporation tried to bring back the Phaeton in the late 40s, 50s, and then later in the 90s, to no avail. The days where royalty could be chauffeured around in an open air vehicle seemed to be lost for now. What happened to Helios's son? Well, as feared, he was not able to control the powerful horses. As a result, he would fly too close to the earth scorching some of its land and then fly too far away from the earth causing other parts to be frozen. Zeus, the supreme god of the heavens and the earth, seeing the destruction that Phaeton was causing, fired a lightning bolt causing Phaeton to fall to the earth to his death.
The moral of the story, I guess, is to spend more time with your kids by taking them to car shows. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe. Even if you didn't like it, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see you on the next video.